this ship in foreign waters, you men are being given new and grave responsibilities. Each and every one of you is now an ambassador of goodwill. By your conduct, our nation will be judged. This is a legacy that has come to us from the very founding days of the Navy. The first of our ships to carry the flag into a European port was commanded by a man who also gave our service its earliest traditions of heroism and victory, John Paul Jones. It was he, more than anybody else, who set the pattern of everything about us. He was not favored by birth or circumstance. In fact, he did it the difficult way. He came from a poor Scots family, went to sea when he was 12. This was in 1759. instruments of war music and as such are forbidden. My father played these and his father before him. And they probably wore those skirts you're wearing now. With the wearing of the kilt you can be imprisoned and sent across the seas. I order you to disperse in the king's name. We held you all right, but our king carries a definite name. Disperse! Disperse! <laughs> to the true king. To the king. Across the water. Aye, God bless him. King Jimmy and Bunny Prince Charlie. God bless him. Again, Job. Calling a kilter scut. Them and their threats. Well, what think you, lad? I can not about kings, but across the sea. Well, you're talking to the right man now, John. Mr. Young knows all about the sea. He's a ship owner. You're a ship owner isn't the same thing as being a ship's master, is it, lad? I know, sir. Well, a ship owner sits in the counting house. Not for him, those foreign ports. Not for him to feel the heave of the deck beneath him. Do you want to go deep water, lad? Oh, yes, sir. Well, we'll see what we can do about it. Here, look, lad. Someday soon, you may be sailing on a ship like that. Stay here, lad. on a coaster, ship's boy, and thus his sea career began. He was taught to reef, to steer, and to splice. In fact, all the things a seaman has to know. By the time he was 17, he had become a skilled navigator, seeking to learn and always working hard. To further his profession, he sought to serve in all manner of ships. Once he even found himself aboard a slaver, but quickly decided that that traffic, although lucrative, was not for him. The horizons of distant seas, the sights of exotic ports, the art of handling men, were all his by the time he had achieved manhood. Three years before the Declaration of Independence, he was not only master of his ship, but also part owner. He was prospering in the West Indies. The future seemed bright, but there was trouble ahead. Uh, 
How's the second mate? Seems to be better, sir. Fever's gone down since the night came. I'll have a look at him before I turn in. What's bothering you, man? First mate in the basin, spare the shore, sir. I sent them to make arrangements for the unloading of the cargo. If you begin on deck, sir, be careful. There's trouble in the mic in. Some of the men have broken into the rum locker. I think the moment has come for me to be having a little talk with a gentleman forward. be getting back to your own quarters. We want our money. You all know the articles you signed. You'll get your pay when you return to your home port. We've been gone from our home port for more than a year now. We're going to shore tonight with money in our pockets. I'll discuss the matter with you in the morning. In the meantime, get forward where you belong. We're not going forward, mister. We're going to shore with money that belongs to us. You were all safe full of it in your cabin. Get forward. I tell you to stand aside. Take him to the forecastle. You, where are you? Forecastle's no place for him, Captain. Cracked his skull. Carry him on deck. Ah, Captain uh, Paul. Understand, there's grave trouble. A man has been killed aboard your ship, and you killed him. Mutiny, sir, in self-defense. Does either kill or be killed. Yes, I'm well aware, Captain Paul, of the problems that confront the master of a merchant ship in maintaining authority. Nevertheless, a man has been killed in this harbor. And as in all His Majesty's colonies, that means a trial must be held. I'm ready to stand trial, sir. It's not as simple as that. Charge against you will be murder. Under that charge, no bail is allowed. Therefore, you should be in prison. At least you'd be safer there. That mutinous scum of yours would rather slip a knife in your back than have you prove mutiny against them. So I should put you in jail. Sit down. There to await the pleasure of an admiralty court. Sit down. And there's the trouble, young man. You have an idea how long it would take to an admiralty court to sit here? <laughs> One year, two years, and in the meantime, what happens to discipline on board the other ships when any rascal knows that a ship's master can rot in jail just for upholding authority? Mm -hmm. You've got a problem, young man, but you've also given me a problem. What does Your Excellency advise? Sit down! says here, you've got a brother living in Virginia. Oh, yes, sir. He went there from Scotland shortly after I went to sea. Well, Virginia isn't very far away. You could buy a small craft for a few pounds. And you're not officially under arrest yet. Get away from here, young man, as fast as you can. And change your name before you go. And Smith, Brown, Jones, get away. And stay away for a year. Two years until the Admiralty Court decides to sit on your case. And I'll send for you. In the meantime, Godspeed, Mr. Uh, John Paul. Huh? Jones, sir. John Paul Jones. Not a bit of distinguished name, is it? <laughs> Thank you. 
Peter Woolley, clerk accountant, at your service, sir. I'm looking for William Paul. Well, I fear you'll not find him. He's away. No, I mean, yes, sir. The fact is, Master Paul was taken very ill. Quite suddenly, he... Well, sir, he now rests in Fredericksburg Churchyard. When? Three months past. It must be a stranger here not to know of it. Well... William Paul was all the kin I had in Virginia. Kin, say you, sir? I'm William's brother. Indeed, sir? Then you'd be John Paul. Well, Master William's solicitors were most concerned with finding you. You're a sea captain, aren't you, Master Paul? I have been. I go by the name of Jones now. Wooly. Master Wooly. 